How's it going everybody? Wayne here. Today we have six more games that we'll be adding to the collection. Let's check them out. And the first game we have today is Bust a Move 99. Bust a Move 99 was developed by Taito and published by Acclaim, releasing for the N64 in 1999. Bust a Move is a puzzle game. The goal in Bust a Move is to connect three colors of a bubble. Doing so will make them pop. If there are other bubbles under the ones you pop, you'll send them over to the opponent's side. In arcade mode, you'll face a different opponent in each level. When you reach the final opponent, it's a big green dinosaur. After you beat it, you realize it was just a costume and you challenge the true final boss. The game is pretty fun, but short. The graphics are plain, but they work. The music is plain as well. The game does offer a 4 player mode, which would be a blast with friends. Overall, Bust the Move 99 is worth checking out if you're a puzzle game fan. Bust the Move 99 is game number 222 for the collection, and I already have the box and manual. The cart cost me $19 ship, bringing our total up to $10,500 for the N64 Complete in Box Library. Next up, we have a game I've never played before until now, and that game is Buck Bumble. Buck Bumble was developed by Argonaut Software and published by Ubisoft. It buzzed onto store shelves in 1998. Buck Bumble is an action shooter game where you control a bee. Your mission is to stop insects from destroying everything. Along the way you can find different weapons to aid you in your quest. The visuals are not great, there is a lot of fog and the environments mashed together. The controls are great, controlling Buck takes time getting used to, but the game did a great job simulating the flight of a bee. Buck can hover and flip, which is pretty cool. The sound in the game is good as well with upbeat music. This is one of those games that flew under the radar for me. Despite the visuals being bad, the game is a lot of fun. I will come back to this game and do a full playthrough of it. I also want to come back to the game with a friend because there are some cool multiplayer games where you can battle each other or play soccer by shooting the ball. Buck Bumble is worth checking out if you've never played it before. Buck Bumble is game number 223 for the collection and the box and manual already had the cart cost me $45 ship bringing our total up to $10,545 for the N64 library. And next up is Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune was developed and published by Game Tech, releasing for the N64 in 1997. Wheel of Fortune is a game based on a TV show with the same name. Your goal is to solve puzzles by guessing letters or buying vowels. The visuals in the game are ugly. It has blurry sprites and a plain looking background. The gameplay is just like the show with well laid out options. You control the wheel with the stick which is pretty interesting. Overall the game does a good job representing the TV show game. If you like Wheel of Fortune, this isn't a terrible game to get. Wheel of Fortune is game number 224 for the collection and I had the box and manual already. The cart cost me $8 ship, bringing our total up to $10,553. Next up we have Scooby Doo Classic Creep Capers. Scooby-Doo was developed by Terraglyph Interactive Studios and published by THQ. It released for the N64 in 2000. Scooby-Doo is obviously based off the cartoon with the same name. You basically play an episode of the cartoon. You'll be running around picking up items and finding clues. The characters don't talk at all. Instead, you gotta read what they're saying. You get minimal sounds from Scooby from time to time. The game was interesting when I first started playing it. I was enjoying finding the clues in the game. Rather than a life meter, you have a scare meter. When Shaggy and Scooby freak out, your scare meter starts going down. The game took a turn for the worse when I ran into the first night. As you change from area to area, the camera angles change, throwing the controls way off. It's a complete turn off for the game. If the game had better controls, it would be an okay game. I don't recommend this game for the N64. Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers is game number 225 for the collection and it cost me $29 shipped, bringing our total up to $10,582 for the N64 library. Next up a racing game, Top Gear Overdrive. Top Gear Overdrive was developed by Snowblind Studios and published by Kimco. It released for the N64 in 1998. Top Gear Overdrive is an arcade style racing game for the N64. The game features models of real cars from Beatles to Ferraris to Hummers and a few unrealistic cars such as a hot dog and an N64 logo. Each car handles differently, however any vehicle you choose will take time to get used to the controls. 
The controls are ultra sensitive, often causing you to oversteer the vehicle. The N64 vehicle is the worst for handling. It's almost unplayable. Perhaps they should have named the game Top Gear Oversteer. The game does have some great music soundtracks to keep it interesting. The game also has a lot of secrets to discover. Overall, Top Gear Overdrive is a decent racing game. It will take you time to learn the controls, but it's not bad. It's worth checking out if you're a fan of racing games. Top Gear Overdrive is game number 226 for the library, and I already had the box and manual, the card I found out in the wild for $2, bringing our total up to $10,584 for the N64 Complete and Box Quest. Last but not least, Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98 was developed by Software Creations and published by Midway. It released for the N64 in 1997. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98 is an arcade style hockey game and a sequel to Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. These games are just like NASCAR 99 and NASCAR 2000, as in they are the exact same games. Same graphics, same music, and mostly the same gameplay. 3D Hockey 98 is just a little harder to score in. Even the same humor is in the game, where the announcer says things like, that goalie's a wall, and the goalie actually turns into a brick wall. If you followed the N64 quest, you know I think Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey is the best hockey game on the system. That remains the same because it's more fun being able to score easier. This is still an excellent fun hockey game. The only downfall in the game is there's no real simulation modes for fans that want a realistic hockey game. Overall, the Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey games are fun and worth checking out. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98 is game number 227 for the collection and I found the cart in the wild for $5, I already had the box and manual. And that brings our total up to $10,589 for the N64 Complete in Box Library. Let's get these games on the shelf. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe. I'll be completing the entire N64 library, complete in box, right here on the show. Also make sure to leave a thumbs up for Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. Until next time, I'm Wayne, and thanks for watching.